A bezier curve is a smooth curve defined by control points. The points guide the shape of the curve and it makes it flexible and easy to control. The most common type is the quadratic bezier curve which has three control points and the cubic bezier curve which has four points. So let's learn how to make a bezier curve with three points. So in my workspace right now, I have three points, P1, P2, and P3. So this is going to be the start of the curve, this is going to, to be the end of the curve, and this is going to be our main kind of control point that we can move around to change the shape of the curve. So I'm going to insert a script in server script service. Keep in mind I also have all of these named correctly, as you can see here. So let's insert a script, and the first thing we're going to get is those three points. And then after we get those points, I'm going to define a So these two functions right here are super important in making our Bezier curve. We have LERP, linear interpolation, and also the quadratic Bezier uh, for our curve. So we're using the LERP function and returning back our quadratic Bezier. So how this code is actually going to work is we're going to have a local function and we're, we're going to call it create curve. This is going to make our curve in the workspace. And so basically, if we update a, our P2 control point there, then, or you know, the middle point, we're going to constantly update the curve. So just in case if we were to move it like over here, then the curve would update to that so how we're going to do that is making a local function and using a while to do loop and using task.wait to constantly uh, basically destroy the parts in our folder and then remake the curve so it updates to the current position of our middle point here all right so in our create curve we are going to check if game.workspace find first child curve parts is equal to nil then we are going to make a new folder so instance.new folder folder dot name will be equal to curve parts and then folder dot parents will be equal to game.workspace so we are checking if there is no folder in the workspace and if there isn't one we're going to make one but if there is a folder, then we're going to set the folder variable equal to the current folder that we have in the workspace. And then after we do that, we can start uh, with making our parts and looping through it. So to do this, we're going to say for i is equal to 0, 1, 0 0.1, do. Now, this is basically saying we're going to have 10 parts, a part of our curve, because we're starting at zero, going up to one and going up by 0.1, which means this will run a total of 10 times. So we're going to have 10 parts and we can change this later on. And we're going to get the curve here or the quadratic Bezier from the function here. And we're going to send an I and then P1 dot position p2 dot position and also p3 dot position once we've done that we can create our part and then set all of the properties and yeah everything else looks good we can go ahead and test this in our game Oh, but before we do that, in while true do here, we have our create curve. We are going to send in for our curve. Oh, well, actually, I don't think we need anything because we're already sending it here. So we're just going to say create curve task dot wait. And we're going to say game dot workspace dot curve parts. And then we're going to destroy it just like this. So then it keeps, uh, making our curve with the correct positions. So now running your game, we see we have these parts that are in a curve. And as you can see, P1 
is influencing the curve. So if we were to move it, you can see that this control point is affecting our curve. We can make it taller, make it shorter, and we can move it in whatever ways that we would like. And as you can see, there are about nine or 10 parts here. So let's see how it would look if we were to change the amount of parts it makes. And how we can do this is we can go back to our for loop and go to this line right here. And instead of 0 0.1, we could put in 0 0.01, which I believe makes about 100 parts. And then playing our game, we have <laughs> all of these parts right here. It looks a little bit weird. And if we move them around, it's a little bit maybe slower, maybe a little bit laggier. But this is what it looks like. Quadratic Bezier curves are pretty cool, but now let's get into how we can make cubic Bezier curves using a module script. So there is this Bezier module that I have right here. And don't worry, guys, this module will be uh, in the description. First thing in the description, you can go get the model put into your game. This is uh, kind of what it looks like if you just want a little peek at it. And we're going to be using this to make a curve with four control points. So once you have your module in, I'm going to insert a local script into my starter player scripts here. And the first thing I am going to get is the module. Oh, whoops. Just like this. And then I need to get the parts I have in workspace. I have part A, part B, part C, and part D. So after we get those, we are going to make a new Bezier curve. And how we can do this is by using the constructor in the modules. So we're going to say new Bezier is equal to Bezier dot new. And we're going to send in part A, part B, part C, and also part D. Now also keep in mind, guys, I'm using four control points but you can use a lot more than this. And you could also use less than this. You could use the three control points and you can also even have more than four if you really want to. So I'm just gonna use these four. And what I'm going to do next is have a certain amount of parts that I wanna make. So number of, or not parts, but points really. And you will see in just a second on how this looks. So we're gonna create 50 points and our points will be in a table so this code right here was taken from the actual page to get this module and this is basically making the the visuals for the curve it's making target points or points lines and we are creating different color points to visualize it and also this code right here is also taken from the page and this is how you can fully visualize it you can go to the dev forum post and copy this this code over but i'll also have it in the description so you guys can copy it so it can save you guys some time so this is creating the parts putting them in tables and this is constantly updating positions of it so we can constantly see them so if we play our game you see we have this cool line here it has 50 points you know parts in here which makes it look really smooth so if we move this point you can see what's happening there we can move this one and you could also move these beginning ones too So if we were to also change the number of points, say we remove the zero and we put in five, the curve would not be as smooth because we only have these five points, one, two, three, four, and five. So it is not a very smooth curve as you can see here. So the more points you have, the smoother it's going to look because we don't have as much 
points here to control the line. So another cool thing we can do with this module is have parts follow the path of the curve, basically adding a tweening functionality to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this red part right here, and I'm just going to call it like glow part, change it to some sort of a yellow, and I'm just going to make it neon so it stands out. We can see it pretty well. And then using code from the post we get the glow part tween info the amount of time is the same exact thing as regular tween info and then we are making tweens so we are making create vector 3 tween and c frame tween which will allow us to tween you know where it's looking and also the position at the same time and the how you actually use this is really simple. It's like just any other tween, like a regular tween. You send in your actual part, your you know your object you're using, the property, and the info you're using. So if you put that up here, and we play the game, then you will see the glow part is following the line. And even if we change the path, the part keeps constantly following the path with it. And if you wanted to go through it faster, you can change the tween time to five seconds and it would go through it extremely fast or not extremely fast, but you know, faster than what it was. And we can change the point and it would also follow with the line. So just introducing the glow part for the curves to basically follow the curve this brings a lot of options to the table of how you could use this you can make it for a uh, path like a flying spaceship or drone or something like that you could also use it for character movement uh, that follows along the path too you could also maybe even use it for camera movement and maybe also even some type of projectile system so this module you could use for many different things and it would definitely improve your games and I know guys, I didn't explain everything that is going on in this script, but there is some more explanation on the dev forum post. And also I'm just showing you guys the basics of this module. There are a ton of other things you can do with this whole bunch of different methods you can use and everything else. So this is just the basics of how to use this. And I recommend checking out the full thing. And yeah guys, this was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video, or do you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.